we're starting a brand new way of teaching at the feast. We're starting something exciting. God is birthing a, a whole new generation of people who will hunger to follow the Word. By book, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, story by story, we're gonna sit at the Master's feet with total humility and allow the text as divinely inspired to speak to our hearts. Get ready because we're going to start this journey of longing and really understanding God and His Word for you. everybody merry merry christmas merry christmas everybody it is such a joy and an honor to be with you yet again this sunday how many of you are so excited with our message for today give me a virtual hands up Whoo! i am praying that the message today is gonna touch you it's gonna shift some things inside of you it's gonna make you turn around and see god for who he really is and make you love him even more all right i'm so excited everybody and i want to welcome you officially to the fourth and final installment of our series ascend all right we have been going up three different mountains today we're gonna walk up into our fourth and final mountain all right this is not actually just the series ender but it, this is also the year ender so I want you to be blessed all right I want to congratulate all of you who managed to climb three mountains without even breaking a sweat that's right in fact some of you might have probably been wearing PJs and bedroom slippers instead of sweatpants and hiking boots while doing it am I right <laughs> this was the easiest climb you have ever done in your entire life. Or is it? Because if you've been really receiving, you know, God's message, God has actually been challenging our faith and our resilience in the past few weeks during this series. I mean, talk one was a beautiful reminder for people who have lost their way that you have what? You have access to our God. That's right. God is waiting on you to come back. You always have access to Jesus. Talk two taught us that it's possible to restart our life. That's right. God is giving us a chance to always go back to the beginning. And then last Sunday, we declared the truth that God will show up. Amen. So now, now that we've gone up Mount Eden and Mount Ararat and Mount Moriah, today we're going to head up a miraculous mountain called Mount Sinai. Okay, here's our title for today. Write this down. Mountain of God. The mountain of God. Hallelujah. Are you ready to hike up the mountain of God right now? All right, if you're ready, let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lift your hands like this. Raise your hands like you've never done before. And say this with me. Today, I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I am God's beloved, I am God's servant, and I am God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody, join me in giving honor to God's word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Here is the message that we want to get across to you today, all right? Write this down. God will meet you where you are. 
God will meet you where you are. That's the amazing promise of God today that whatever situation you are in, whatever place you are at, God is going to show up and He's going to meet you right there in the middle of your sin, in the middle of your mess, in the middle of your shame. Hallelujah. Anyway, today we are going to walk up this mountain called Mount Sinai. And let me just say this. One thing that I find so amazing with Mount Sinai is that in the previous mountains that we walked up to, you notice that God only met a few people, right? Like a bunch of people. But here in Mount Sinai, you will find out how God will meet an entire nation, the whole nation of Israel. Now, why is this important? Because it means that God doesn't just care about you. God actually cares about everybody else, you know. He cares about your boss. He cares about your neighbor. He cares about that enemy of yours. God cares about this nation. He cares about that continent. Type it in right now. God cares for all. God cares for all. God is for you, but God is also for everybody else, okay? Anyway, let's go to our foundational verse right now. Today, we're going to talk about this biblical character by the name of Moses. How many of you know Moses? Moses, the adopted son of Egypt, who later found out that he was actually the son of a Hebrew slave. And then soon after, he accidentally kills one of the Egyptian guards that caused him to be evicted from the house of Pharaoh. And then later on, he eventually finds a quiet life as a shepherd in the desert of Midian. And, you know, as a shepherd, Moses would often go up into this mountain called Horeb, which would later be called Mount Sinai, all right? This is where we find ourselves in this story where one day, as Moses was tending sheep, Moses saw something very, very strange, okay? Turn to Exodus chapter 3. We're going to read from verse 1 all the way to verse 3. It says that, As he led flock far into the wilderness and came to Sinai, the mountain of God, there the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the middle of a bush. Moses stared in amazement. Though the bush was engulfed in flames, it didn't burn up. Verse 3, This is amazing, Moses said to himself. Why isn't that bush burning up? I must go see it. So, The story is quite simple, all right? Moses sees a bush that was burning up, but it wasn't being consumed. Now, if you want to try to imagine that, picture uh, the human torch from Fantastic Four. There you go. Or the dark phoenix from the X-Men series, right? These two people, they were both on fire, but they weren't getting burned. Now, this picture for me personally, it's a beautiful reflection, all right? This burning bush, it's a beautiful reflection of what happens when God is in our life. In the sense that, you know, when you think about all the things that tried to consume you this year, I mean, all the afflictions you went through, all the trials that tried to torment you, here's the thing, they weren't enough to demolish you, right? In the words of St. Paul in 2 Corinthians, he says this in chapter 4, We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. You see, my dear friends, some fires might have distressed you this year, am I right? But guess what? It wasn't enough to destroy you. Somebody give God a hallelujah for that. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, in Hebrew, they call this burning bush the sne tree. Okay, that's how it's spelled. That's how it's also pronounced, the sne tree. Notice how the word sne is almost written like the word Sinai, right? That's because it's not an accident. You see, the author was deliberately pointing a hidden message. And the message is this, that the tree and the mountain, they're one and the same thing. All right, you'll find out later why this is important. Anyway, there's also another hidden message that only ancient readers would have probably picked up on. Unless you know a little Hebrew, then you probably didn't get it either, like me. Okay, but let me give it to you now. Sne and Sinai actually rhymes with the Hebrew word test. Okay, T-E-S-T. So in this sense, the author was actually saying, listen to this, that through this tree and mountain, God will test you. Okay? Let me ask you this. How many of you like tests? Tests, exams, when you were studying. Okay? Let me be honest. As a student, that word test was enough to give me allergies. Every single time I would hear the teacher say, may test tayo ngayon, I would break out in hives. You know, it was enough to make me sick to my stomach. That's why every math exam, every science exam, I was in the nurse's clinic because of a 
tummy ache. <laughs> and I can say that because, you know, even if, my even if my teachers are listening right now, you know, I'm done with school anyway. In biblical terms, the word test was a whole lot different. And let me explain. The word test meant, at least in the biblical sense, all right, that God will reveal to you who you really are. All right? Did you catch that? Okay. I don't think you did. Let me say it again. That through a test, God will reveal to you who you really are. And now, let me just preach this, okay? This is a revelation to somebody listening to this message right now. Because if you are going through a test in this season of your life, it's not because God doesn't care about you. No. But it's because God wants to reveal who you really are. God needs to strip away every layer that the world has placed on you. Through a test, God's fire can burn away every Everything that doesn't belong to him because tests actually come in two forms trials and temptations and you know what both of them they're like x-ray machines that expose what's inside of you that's why when you go through a trial and a temptation you actually realize three powerful truths all right number one that there is a God that's right and then number two that you are not God and then number three that you need God how many of you need God, all right? See, that's what happened to me this year. I went through a big crisis where God needed to remind me that He is in charge and that I need Him in my life. But let me say it again. God will meet you where you are, all right? That's our promise for today. That's God's promise for you today. God is going to meet you right there. Let's pray, everybody. Bow down your heads. Let's pray for God's blessing. Heavenly Father, we believe that you are here in our midst the promise is that whenever two or three are gathered, there you are in their midst. And so we believe that you're here in our very presence. Meet us, Lord, as is where is in the middle of everything that's going on in our life, Father. And we're going to trust that whatever word you will speak today, it's going to bless us and it's going to change us. Thank you, Jesus, for your message. In Jesus' name. Amen. One more time, everybody, let's sing. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Hallelujah. I believe that God is going to show up right now. But ready yourselves, everybody. I want you to open your heart, open your mind for a message from the Lord. Hello, dear brothers and sisters. Welcome to our feast. Let me continue our message. Again, our one big message for today is God will meet you where you are. Can you put your hands to your heart and say, God will meet me where I am. Say to the persons around you, God will meet you where you are. Remember how Brother Odi said, Sne, tree, and Sinai, or Sinai, rhymes with the Hebrew word for test? I want you to think about this question. Imagine, remember, is there another tree that is connected to a test, and yet it's also filled with God's presence? Try to backtrack the last few weeks, and if you guessed it right, the hint is Eden, the tree of life in the Garden of Eden. Imagine that, my dear brothers and sisters. The author of the Exodus was pointing, you know, was pointing to the idea that the burning bush is the tree of life. You will see how brilliant God has worked through the people who wrote this. These ancient writers, they, they, they used design patterns all throughout the Bible. One is hyperlinked to the other one. And it's so nice. And from words to phrases to names to places to events, and the Bible is a whole big idea of God. And that is God's word. Yes, the tree of life is on fire. <laughs> Looking at the burning bush and God is sitting on it. And in talk one, we talked about um, uh, Genesis never mentioned that Adam and Eve were able to eat or eating from the tree of life. Why? Because most likely for them, it was terrifying. It was uh, scary for them. And so they go instead and ate from the fruit of the tree of knowing good and bad because it was attractive because it was seductive isn't it our story too we have a chance to be with the tree of life but yet 
we are afraid of God. God is scary for us. And we go to a tree or we go someplace in this world where we think it's good for us. It's seductive. Pride is seductive. Uh, pleasure is seductive. Lust is seductive. Greed, cheating, selfishness, arrogance is seductive. And once we remain there, we go into ruin. We lose the paradise. We lose the abundance. And, you know, well, the question is, why do we think God is so scary? <laughs> I know, maybe some of you could relate to that. When, when, when you think about God, when you think about going to church, when you think about relating, going inside the church, uh, some would even say, Masusunog ako, or I will get burned when I get inside the church. <laughs> Let me tell you a familiar story. One day, the farmer called the meeting in his farm, and there was a chicken, and there was a pig in his farm. And he said, on my way here, I found a poor little family who were very hungry. Can you help me to feed him, uh, feed their family? And the chicken said, of course, sure, I know. Let's, let's make him a ham and let's make them a ham and egg sandwich. <laughs> and the pig froze in terror. And the chicken said to the pig, well, I'm going to give my eggs. What will you give? <laughs> that means the chicken will just give what the chicken produces. But the pig will give his life just to make sure it is given. So for a lot of people, they think that following God means giving. Following God means giving a, 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 an hour or two every Sunday or giving 10% of their income to church, to God, giving a service in so many ways. May I just a little bit add to that understanding. Following God is not about giving. Following God is about dying. It's dying to oneself. Dying to our pleasures, dying to our, dying so that others may live. That's the symbol of the cross. God is not a nice decoration that we just hang on the wall, although I have one here. <laughs> God is not an amulet or a good luck charm. God is not, you know, you know, God is not about the feelings and emotions that when we pray, you get goosebumps and then you cry. God is more than that. God will turn your life upside down. God, God changes you and changes everything around you. Your, 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 your values, your goals, your priorities. God will overhaul you. You will die to yourself and you will live eternal life with him the burning bush the tree of life is 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 going to transform you once you have come in connection with god he just he doesn't just want any something from you he wants the whole of you again it's like the burning bush and the tree of life will give you a software upgrade okay where the old version of you will die and it will be replaced with the new version of you. And it begins. Moses must, wasn't like Adam. Adam didn't go to the tree of life. He chose the other way. But Moses, seeing a burning bush that wasn't consumed, he went further and closer to the tree of life, to the burning bush. Instead of stepping away, being afraid, and afraid of God, scared of God, he steps forward. So God tells him, take off your sandals because this is holy ground. Look at the hyperlink. Moses is coming back again to Eden. In the presence of God. He removes his sandals as a symbol of the nakedness of Adam, Adam and Eve before the fall. Wow. And instead of being burned by the tree of life, the burning bush, Moses is transformed by it. This, I want to tell you just a simple story last night I was able to connect with my fellow colleagues I got an invitation from Doctors Society of Doctors for their Christmas party and I said 
Christmas party, you're gonna have an inspirational talk. Yes, Doc Brother Didoy, we ne- we ask you to give us a talk and also facilitate sharing. And and I got to know the doctors there, and the sharing was all about real frontline doctors who got sick with COVID. And man, I tell you, I I it's my first time to see and meet them, but I was changed when I heard their stories and. And, and let me give you a few examples. There was one doctor. I cannot tell you the name because I wasn't able to ask their permission. But this doctor was, was like the mother of all the doctors there. And she was the one who trained many of them. And she got COVID. And, and, and she said, I'm still grateful. I'm alive. You know, in the middle of my crisis, in the middle of my sickness, I, I, I thought of Jesus. And she said, Jesus suffered more than I did. So I'll be okay. <laughs> and, 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 and as Jesus is raised back to life, I will rise up again from this. And imagine that's a doctor who in the middle of her sickness said that she was so connected. Her sickness connected her to the sufferings of Christ. Wow, what a spiritual maturity. And and the sickness transformed her to live life more, to value life more. There was another doctor who, who shared that she was the doctor, a specialist doctor, and yet her husband got sick. And and she she they their specialization they're used to being in control they know what to do they they can command people they can tell the hospital this is their but during that time oh man she said I lost all control and what I learned in the process is to let go to let go of my control and let God be in control. And God saw them through. Of all those people that we were able to hear their stories last night, they all recovered. There were still some damages, but God is still good. They all agreed. If you're going through sickness, connect to God's suffering. If you're going through doubts, connect to God's faith, hope, and love that is is given to you. It will always be our choice. Are we going to be scared of God? Or are we going to be stepping into God? Stepping away or stepping into God? The good news today is remember, wherever you are, whatever you're going through, whatever you've done, whatever you are going through, whatever will be, God will meet you where you are. Have you ever pressed the fast forward button of a video player? If the answer is yes, then you'll be okay with what I'm going to do right now. Our Bible story, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to press the fast forward button. Moses talks to God on top of Mount Sinai. God tells him, go to Pharaoh, tell him to set my people free. Moses goes down the mountain, goes to Egypt, talks to Pharaoh. Pharaoh says, no way. Then plagues happen. And then Pharaoh says, okay, go, go, go. And Moses leads the people of Israel through the Red Sea. Water. A wall of water on the right. A wall of water on the left. Woohoo! If you watched The Ten Commandments, 1946 movie by Cecil B. DeMille's. I think that's what it says. Is it 1946? Or somewhere there. Really old movie. Charlton Heston lifting up his staff. The walls of water on both sides. Woohoo! A lot of people think that's the climax. It's not the climax. It's just the start of the story. Because this is what happens. Moses, after that, leads the people of Israel to... The mountain where he met God, Mount Sinai. And, but this time, instead of, the, remember the burning bush? It's not the burning bush anymore. It's the burning mountain. I'm going to read that right there. Verse, verse 18, chapter 19. All of Mount Sinai, all of Mount Sinai was covered with smoke 
because the Lord had descended on it in the form of fire. The Lord came down on the top of Mount Sinai. Indeed, Snetri and Sinai, remember, use the same letters. Sne and the, the, the Snetri and Sinai have become one. The burning bush and the mountain are now one. Now, I want you to read the reaction of the people of Israel when they see this mountain with smoke and fire. They, uh, verse uh, 18, they stood at a distance trembling with fear. So when Moses was asking them, let's go up the mountain now. See, see, look at that fire. Look at the smoke. Let's go up the mountain. This is the response of the people of Israel. They said, uh, verse 19, chapter 20, you speak to us and we will listen. Moses, you're the man. But don't Please let God speak directly to us uh, or we will die. <laughs> In other words, you know what they said? Who? Me? Uh, go, go up the mountain? Meet, meet God? Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> now, friends, I, wh wh why, would, why would they respond in that way? Can I ask you this question? Personal question. It's you and me. How many times have you said that response? How many times, you know, God was telling you to do something. God was telling you a mission. God, God was, was saying, this is what I want you to do. And how many of you said, me? Are, are you, you're talking to me? No, 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 no. Yeah, this is the reason why the church, I believe, is weak today. Because we delegate, we delegate to priests and nuns and religious professionals to communicate to God for us. You know, God, you speak to them and then they will speak to me. That's, that's now how God wants it. I repeat, sne, tree, and Sinai, they rhyme with the word test because this was a test. And the test was this. Will you climb the mountain of the Lord? Israel said, no, 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 no. Reminds me of Adam and Eve because Adam and Eve they were supposed to eat from the tree of life, but they didn't. They went to the other tree, the tree of knowing good and bad, because it was more attractive. God is scary. And so this is exactly what Israel did. What did Israel do? They, in chapter 32, they built, this is insane. First time I read this, I said, how could they do that? In chapter 32, the people of Israel built their own idol, a golden cow to worship, to worship the cow. In my mind, the first time I read this, I said, how can they be so foolish? They just saw one miracle after another miracle after another miracle from God. They knew God was God. And then here they are building their own God. How, how is that possible? Friends, we do that too. 3,000 years later, we read that story, and that is a perfect picture of what we do. I'll tell you why they did that. Because God is terrifying. God is scary. You know, to go and eat from the tree of life? <gasps> no, let's just go to this other tree that's more attractive, you know. Go up the mountain? Oh, my gosh, it's on fire. Woo! Uh, Moses, you go. You go. Oh, we'll, we'll support you all the way. You know, we, what we do? We create a version of God that we can control. That's what we do. That's what we do. We, we tame God. We put him in the box of our expectations. You know, you do this for us. You do this for us. And when he doesn't answer our prayer, magtatampo tayo. We get angry at God. You know what? It's okay if you get angry at God. God can handle it. All I'm saying is we have a long way to go. To understand that God is God. You see, the moment, I hope you're listening to me, the moment we control God is the moment He ceases being God. So this is what happens next. Are you listening? Moses, so, so they commit adultery, um, idolatry. They worship this golden cow, okay? Really bad. Moses goes up the mountain again, asks forgiveness from God. This will blow your mind. God goes down the mountain. God meets us where we are. Why do I know that? Well, I'll tell you. In Exodus chapter 33, verse 9, um, it talks about the tent. 
And the tent is like a traveling tabernacle where, where, where Israel prayed. It says there that when Moses was there, Exodus 33, verse 9, the pillar of cloud would come down and hover at the entrance while the Lord spoke with Moses. Where was the tent located? At the bottom, at the foot of Mount Sinai. God went down the mountain. Can I, can I just summarize this story uh, blow by blow? Just, just so that you, you kind of like know, you know the sequence. Number one, God says, come up, come up, come up to the mountain of the Lord. Come on, come on, come. And what did people say? What did man say? No, 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 no. <laughs> what does God do? He goes down the mountain. He goes down the mountain. He, God meets us where we are. Where you are right now. That, that's, that's the, can I tell you a story? Um, I, I love this story. Um, Many, many years ago, when, when I was still young and gorgeous, I joined a 400-meter race. And uh, now I'm just old and my wife is gorgeous. But, but um, I really thought I was a fast runner. Because when I was, when I was a kid, I would always run away from bullies. So I, st- I thought I still had it. I forgot that it was 15 years later when I joined this race. And so I was there, and in the, when the starting gun shot, I just, I just jumped out like a firecracker. And, and I ran full steam ahead like I was the flash. Woo! And, and I, I, remember, I, I remember just all, all the other runners at my back. And I had pity, you know, in my heart for them is, oh, they're eating my dust. You know, I was just running full speed, 400 meters, you know, but somewhere in the middle of the race, my, my legs. And remember, there was no training. I had no training, I had no preparation whatsoever. My legs started turning into jelly and it, it just buckled under my under me. And, and, and what happened was I just dove and I crash landed like Seri on Captain Reed. Hello to K-drama fans. So I crash landed on the ground. And while I was lying down like a flat, like a pancake on the ground, you know, my friend who saw everything, like, like he told me, he said it was like you, you, you were in slow motion. I was just seeing you, you know. Um, hitting the ground, my, my friend ran to me and he picked me up. When he picked me up, that's when I noticed that both of my knees were bleeding and I could hardly walk, um, much less run. He put his, his, my arm on, on his shoulder, he put his other arm around me and we started hobbling to the finish line. And, and you know, as, as the crowds were cheering me on, um, you know, as both of us were hobbling, he, he said, he whispered to me, you know, Bo, I think you should not have joined the track and field event. You know, you should have joined swimming. Your diving form was perfect. So, <laughs> and so finally, I, 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 I crossed the finish line. The reason why I share you that story is this. And I pray that your heart is open as I speak this word. We think that God is our finish line. We think that God is our standard. We think that God is the goal. We think that God is there on top of the mountain and that we're supposed to strive towards that mountain. You know what? If God is just the finish line, we might as well give up. Might as well throw in the towel because we can't do it on our own. We cannot do it. But I've got good news for you. God is not just the finish line. God is also the friend who runs to us when we fall, who picks us up. God is the God who picks us up and then puts his arm around us and puts our arm around his shoulder and then we hobble together towards the finish line. God is both finish line and friend. And I want you to know who Jesus is. Jesus is God coming down the mountain. Jesus is God meeting you where you are. In your sins, in your wounds, in your tears, in your failures. God is meeting you where you are.
Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to click the like button and tell people and all your friends and family about the inspiration they can receive here. And remember to subscribe and click the bell icon so that you get notified when we're going to upload the next inspiring video.